Welcome to my tips and tricks video for the very first Hathi mission in Age of Empires the Divinative Edition. So if you don't know what this is in the Divinative Edition, there are certain campaign missions you can play. And this one is for the first Hathi mission, which is a civilization in the game. And I'm recording right now like a tips and tricks video for this mission because in my opinion it's quite hard. So, if you don't know how to already play Age of Empires 1, I'd recommend starting off with the ancient Egyptian learning tutorials because I'm not going to cover absolutely everything, like the basics and everything in this video. I'm pretty much going to cover some tips and tricks I found for this particular mission. Reason why I've got the menu up here is so that the game stays paused, and reason why I'm not on the mission select screen is because the mission select screen has a really loud narrator you cannot pause, and rather than waiting for him to finish talking each time, I've just started off, like, playing the game already. Right, so the first thing that the game will start, this mission will start you off with is two priests. Now... What you're meant to do here is you're meant to use your two priests here to convert a bunch of enemy units and or at least at least one villager and then get the villager to build a town center and kind of build up your town from there and then you're meant to uh, defeat these two civilizations the Hurrians and the Hathians. The Hathians are what I consider the less dangerous of your two opponents because the Hurrians already have um already in the tool age which is the second age so they have a technology advantage over you and the hatians will constantly stay in the stone age so from playing this mission already i know that uh pretty much up here and to the left of the map that is where the hatians reside and the hurrians reside over here by the way uh just to um a fair warning this mission will pretty much include uh, spoil. This uh, entire video will pretty much include spoilers on how to do this mission because I'm assuming you're watching this mission. If you couldn't figure out how to complete, I mean, watching this video, if you couldn't figure out how to complete this campaign mission here yourself, and I will say I wouldn't blame you because it's quite hard. So, sorry, but I'm really not going to be trying to avoid spoilers for this because I need to talk about all the spoilers like the one I ju did just then, in order to explain this properly. So. These two buildings, I actually, yeah, these two buildings you can pretty much ignore. They're just Hattian houses, and you don't even have the right technology with your priest to convert them yet. Like if I right-click this, it says here you must reach search monetism before you can convert enemy buildings. And while playing as a Hattian, they actually don't have that research. If you're wondering what the game's talking about there, this is a certain technology you can research at your temple where you originally create priests, but I don't have a temple here. I'm also in the Stone Age, so I'd have to advance all the way to the Bronze Age, perhaps the Iron Age, to research that technology. And this mission here does not allow you to advance to the Iron Age, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so... Here, this, okay, that was actually perfect, but what I'm trying to do here is convert a single villager here, just on his own, like so, and that actually worked. Now, I'm just going to try and get him out of there. I don't even know why he, um, I don't even know why he is, like, already at low health. Ah, that's not good. So the clubmen here are trying to, right now, attack the villager. This is actually good, the priests are healing them. So what I'm going to do here is pretty much leave these two here as a distraction while my priest kind of while my priest kind of covers the village. The village is the most important thing here, at least for me. The pr this priest can die. I don't really care because I just want to get this single villager, get him back to the town, and have him build a town center, which I'm going to place right here near the gold. You may not follow my way of thinking, but for, but for me, I pretty much will count it as a victory if I can um if I can get a single villager away from um away from the Hattians and um back he over here to build a town center. Because, well, then once you have the town center, the, this mission gives you enough food in your stockpile here to immediately start building more villages. And on top of that, I actually have a clubman with me, and one of my priests didn't die. So, I'm actually going to save it here, because this is actually a very good, like, this is actually one of my better runs. Normally, both priests die. 
by the um by the by the Hattians. I don't always I never go for the Hurrians because they have towers guarding their place. So I'm just going to save the game right here. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to save it here because this will actually give me a little bit of an advantage. And now I'm going to uh, load the game and load another save I have at the basically. So this is going to be another save that's on the same difficulty I was playing on before when I was playing the mission. That's moderate difficulty, by the way, because. Even though I successfully converted the villager, I just want to show you how uh, changing the difficulty from standard to moderate actually makes um, one very large difference in this mission anyway. So we're loading again, and in this save, all I've done is I've just walked my priest over here. And now I'm just going to get him to convert this club man, and I'm going to get this pr priest to convert this club man. And then I'm just going to get to attack this club man here. Now all I really need to do is wait for the priests to recharge their health. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to show you what happens when you go and try and um when you go and try and convert a mob of villagers. Because as you've seen before, that one villager pretty much he ran away from my priests. That is the usual um, response villagers will do when there's not many of them um, around, but... Uh, I'm just gonna have to kill off this clubman here too. I'm going to try and like get a whole bunch of villagers over here grouped up to show you what happens. I can pretty much actually explain what, what I'm, um, what I'm uh, expecting to happen while I'm going over here. Okay, watch. So, now I'll try and convert them. And suddenly, the villagers are all... Okay, this is actually really, really odd. It's not happening. Okay, yes, yes, this is so this is kind of what ended up happening. All the villagers were... Uh, originally what happened was all the villagers mobbed together and started whacking the um, absolute crap out of my priest and actually killed him. I was really, really surprised when that happened because I was used to playing the um, standard difficulty on this mission and I wasn't really used to villagers just, well, all grouping up and trying to hit you. So I'll show you how that pretty much never happens. Okay, you know what? Frankly, I don't really actually need to show that I'm not lying because, I mean, why would I be? Everything I've shown you so far is pretty much the truth. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to put a cut in the recording and I'm going to come back once um, I've built up a tiny a little bit of uh, my town on that original save, um, basically that original save I was playing, so I can then show you the tactics that I use to um, uh, to make sure that the um, attacks that come my way are defeated. What I mean by this is both the Hadians and the Hurrians will eventually both st start sending units at you, especially on the moderate difficulty, which is the one I'm going to be uh, playing on. But if all you wanted to know is how to successfully convert a single villager, get him over to this side of the map and build a town center, you can stop watching this video now. I don't really blame you, and thanks for watching what you did. But yeah, as I mentioned before, I'll see you after the cut if you want to stick around and see the tactics I use to build up my base. And then I'll also cover after that like a, a point where I'm further on, either in the Tool Age or the Bronze Age, explain a bit more of my tactics, explain some of the technologies you can research. And then finally, after that, I'll end the video with the tactics I use to eliminate the Hadians and then the Hurrians, and by that I mean I'll assault their base with, like, catapults and stuff. So, yeah, I'll see you then. Okay, so, like I mentioned, I'll, I put a cut in here, and then come back once I either reach the Tool Age or the Bronze Age. And here I have reached the um, Tool Age. So, let me explain a few things that have happened here and my reasoning. I'll just uh, open up the menu again and pause the game so nothing happens while I'm talking and I can explain what I'm talking about. Right, so, um, while I wasn't recording, there were, there were actually some moments which maybe I should have been recording, but um, that just didn't end up happening. So I'll pretty much just explain here what happened with my mouse and you are... Uh, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to imagine it. So... There was actually a bit of a tense moment where two clubmen attacked, and if you remember from where I previously left off, I only had one clubman and this priest here. So what I actually ended up doing was I just got the priest to heal the clubman. The club Apparently, if you are healing one clubman with one priest, he can actually sustain enough damage, I mean, he can keep up enough health that he can kill both the clubmen. 
Another thing that ended up happening, was, which was actually really fortunate for me, was two of the Hattian villagers ended up wandering by and I converted them with my priest. So that meant I got two free villagers and I didn't really have to pay any food for them, which was great. Because as you can see right here, I've used up pretty much all my food because cost, advancing to the tool age costed a, um, like a whopping 500 food. So, uh, next up I'm going to explain the rest of the things I've been doing here and why I've been doing them. So the barracks I originally planned to build up on this hill here because I wanted to use the barracks to screen for the enemy troops. What I mean by this is, if you build a barracks, or let's say an archery range like I'm building here, up here on this hill, that means that, well, the um, Hurrians are going to come from either down here or they're going to scoot all the way around and come from here where the Hattians live. And the Hattians are, of course, going to come across this little narrow strip here and come over here to attack your base. So I'm building, I like building archery ranges up here as well as, um, as well as barracks so that the enemies will be enticed to attack those buildings first, keeping my more vital buildings like my granary here safe from attack and also other stuff like um, the market here safe from attack. Another thing which I also done was, as you can tell, I have gold he right here, but I am not currently get. Uh, I'm not currently mining any of the gold because I don't plan to use it just yet. Instead, what I've done is I've re I've researched the first stone um, uh, mining upgrade, and I've got my villagers here mining stone. Then here on my granary, I just went and researched the very first um, tower upgrade, which allows you to build towers. Reason why I'm doing this is because instead of playing this mission defensively, I mean aggressively, I've decided to play it defensively. So I actually have enough stone here to build two separate watchtowers, which I'm going to build here and here, so they provide um, protection for my um, men and, and villagers behind them. And so they have like a wide enough, um, wide enough range to kind of protect my town. Also another thing I've done is I tried to advance to the tool age so quickly so I have a technology uh, uh, like a technology advantage over the Hattians here. So as you can see the Hattians are still using clubmen which are just getting absolutely decimated by my axemen here because axemen are like a step up. So they have 50 health whereas clubmen as you can see here only have 40. Oh that's not good my priest is under attack. I need to keep try I'm trying to keep that from happening because I won't get another I won't get another priest until I get to the bronze age. But they seem very these uh, enemies here seem very very uh, like um set on killing him. Oh, he can only take one more hit. Okay, so because of that I'm going to pretty much move the priest to like the uh, back of the base. I guess if I want to use my units is injured, I can just send them over here for the priest to heal them. But yes, um, one thing you also should keep in mind when converting enemy units is that they won't be upgraded if you research the appropriate technologies. Like I mentioned before, because I have axemen now instead of clubmen, they were able to pretty much decimate the um, Hattian clubmen that came and attacked me, like you've just seen. However, this dude here is a club man I went and converted. So, um, he is, and every, any unit you convert isn't um, affected by any upgrades. So even though I have both upgraded my axemen, uh, my clubmen to axemen, and I've also researched level one leather armor, which actually gives them, um, two armor when it comes to, when it comes to getting, like, well, when they get it, when it comes to being like, hit with like blunt weapons like these clubs here. Um, the clubman he over here doesn't have that. Yeah, reason why I was, yeah, I was kind of uh, stumbling over my words here is because, they, as you can see, these guys are really dead set on hurting my priest, and I don't want that to happen, so that's why I'm just massing my villagers together here and just trying to kill them. But I guess now that that threat's over, I can send them all back to stone mining and stuff. Oh, and uh, reason why all these villagers here are just standing here is because I was waiting to research the domestica domestication upgrade, which gives you um, an extra, like, I, I forgot the exact amount, but it gives you a little extra food on your farms. So I wanted to research that before I started building farms, so all my farms have the upgrade, because if you build farms before you do the upgrade, the farms won't actually have that upgrade. So that's my reasoning there. And that's why I, was also, I also have four whole villagers cutting wood here, 
And originally I really had planned to uh, research this woodcutting upgrade as well beforehand. All the woodcutting upgrades, by the way, you should always research them. It's an excellent idea to do so, because each one of them gives you one plus to your missile weapon range. So what that means is that everything that uses a range weapon will get one plus to its range. The towers will get one plus range, any bowmen you create will get one plus to its range, and I'm not entirely sure about this, but maybe even catapults will get one plus to their range. Also, even though it looks like the, um, I'm not really getting attacked with, like, heaps of ferocity, it might start to ramp up later, depending on when the Hurrians attack me. So, I've, since I've pretty much explained uh, my tactics, reasoning, and everything like that, I'm pretty much going to uh, put another cut in here and come back once my town is much more built up and I've, re and I've reached the um, Bronze Age. Because once I reach that, you can build this building called a government center, and I really want to talk about some technologies in that building because they are super okay. super useful and whether you're in a campaign mission or a skirmish game just against the ai then in my opinion you should just always research these things so i'll see you then and welcome back to the video if you know it probably seems like it never left you know i mean you never left yeah because um i just would will probably have been editing mash the two clips together so yeah even though it's been a while for me it seems like no time has passed at all for you so one of the, uh, this right here is an excellent way of showing why I um, was so adamant about getting that farming upgrade before the, um, before I built any of the farms. So I haven't been sure exactly how long I've been playing here, I don't have a timer, but I'd say around 10 to 15 minutes. That entire time my farmers here were farming and only just now have their farms ran out and need to be replaced. In fact, over at the market, there is another farming upgrade, which you can research, which provides your farms, as you can see there, with another hundred food. I'm not going to research that just, just yet, though, because I'm going to show you some research, um, some other technologies, which, in my opinion, they change everything. So the first one is the Sentry Tower upgrade I'm going to be doing at the Granary. That upgrades all my watchtowers here, the Sentry Towers, and pretty much makes them better in every way. They have more attack, they'll also have more range, and they'll have more health which equals defense. Oh, and um, as you can see here, the Hurrians right now are pretty much attacking in full force. However, what they're doing here is, in my opinion, the worst use out of scout cavalry ever. So, I might as well build one to show you myself. I'll just get a stable built up over here. And it doesn't matter, it's all the way in the back of my land because uh, stable units, pretty much all of them are really fast. So I can just tell them to move up as soon as I like. So, what the Hurrians have done here is they've ran forward and pretty much started trying to stab my towers with their scout cavalry. Never do this in my opinion. If you want to attack a tower, build the better kind of cavalry at the stable called, well, cavalry or camel riders. Either one will do. Well, camel riders, they do more damage against other um, cavalry units, but I'll actually build a few cavalry units. I won't even bother building a scout just yet. And um, I'm doing that mainly because I just want to show you how good they are. They're just so good, in my opinion. Well, they are a little... Um, I guess they're a little worse for their value when it comes to using them in the um, Iron Age. Because by then, a lot of civilizations will be have upgraded to the uh, next stage of cavalry. But, but just for now, in um, the Bronze Age, especially if your enemy is stuck in the Tool Age, they are an excellent raiding force. Now, moving on, some of the other technology I want I wanted to talk about that are other game changes. The wheel. Whenever, like, if you have the resources, make so sure you research this. This is such a good technology, I can't praise it enough. So what it does is not only does it allow you to make chariots, which are a really good, cheap, effective raiding solution, because they do not cost gold. In gauge, games of Age of Empires 1, Gold is, most of the time, a finite resource, because once you run out of gold veins such as this one to mine, then you have to build a dock, hope that you have an ally, that you actually have an ally with you, who you can then trade resources to, and even then, you have to either trade wood, I mean wood, food, or stone for, uh, for gold. So you actually be losing out on those resources to get a bit of gold. However... If you research the wheel upgrade, then you're able to build 
chariots and chariot archers. Okay, ch not every civilization gets chariots, but for those who do and those who get chariot archers, they are an excellent choice for just a cheap unit which you're okay with throwing away. Oh, and uh, by the way, the reason why I'm kind of uh, a little bit lax with ordering these uh, axemen here to retreat is because I've now actually researched broad swordsmen, an upgrade which costs, uh, I think, around 35 gold and 140 food. It is so worth it, in my opinion, because it then allows you to build the broad swordsman, which is an upgrade to the short swordsman. The short swordsman is already a major upgrade from the axemen will destroy them in combat. The broad swordsman will destroy the both uh, the, um, the short swordsman in combat and obliterate an axeman like you were someone with an axe trying to stab a ham sandwich. I don't know why I made the ham sandwich analogy, I just did, I felt like it. Okay, so... Moving on to some other technologies you can build from the government center. By the way, the government center is right here. It's one of the uh, it's one of the buildings you can only build in um, the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, and it only costs wood. So I say, why not build it when if you can? So these three upgrades that you can get here in this mission now explain what they do. This one here is Nobility. It grants you 15 hit points for all. Um, for all horse unit, horse and camel units and camel riders, and it also is required for the upgrade for a scythe chariot. So, uh, for a scythe chariot, uh, imagine you have a chariot in these in, the, in these uh, kind of feudal-ish times, Bronze Age times, like uh, early Greek times. Now imagine you had someone who was there who was like a philosopher, and he and he has an idea for an invention, and his invention is, hey, why don't we basically go full ma Mad Max on this shit and attach blades to the side of our chariot, so as we ride by the enemies, we cut them to ribbons. So yeah, that's basically a scythe chariot in a nutshell. And in this game, they're awesome because, let's say a scythe chariot was attacking this archer here, it has area of effect damage. So let's say I had a clubman, and he was trying to bash the behind, or let's say like basically pretty much the butt of the guy and the horse, so he's pretty much trying to attack the behind of them. The area of effect damage would start affecting him. So pretty much everything around the scythe chariot is hurt, as well as what the ch scythe chariot is stabbing itself. They honestly are super fun to, use, uh, to fu uh, fun to use unit in my opinion, and they're also completely hilarious. Okay. So as you can see here, I've reached my population limit for military units. I can't build anymore. I can build a few more houses. However, in most um, in most campaign maps, your population lim uh, limit is 50 is 50 people only, or 50 like military units in well villages. So what I'm going to show you here is a tactic which is uh, well, it may seem a bit brutal, but. I have to practice it a lot in um, games, especially when you have uh, really low populations, like the campaign saves. So, I mean campaign matches. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll just send all my inferior units, and by that I mean these axemen here and this clubman here, out on a suicide mission. I'll try and kill as enemy, many enemy units as possible with them, but I won't really support them, and I won't really heal them with my priest either, because I'm just trying to get them to infl inflict as much damage as possible, because sadly, Clubmen and Axemen, especially Clubmen, since that's a converted dude, you can't actually um, upgrade them any further. So unfortunately, here as you can see in the back, there's no upgrade to turn a Clubman into a Broad Swordsman. And I'm pretty much up to the technology level now, where all I want is Broad Swordsman in my army. I don't really want these guys anymore. I guess if you really, really care about your units and you're playing on kind of a low difficulty, you could get nostalgic about them like I did about uh, in the past and kind of keep them around and keep them fighting in your army by just continuously healing them with priests, but I'm just showing you the uh, more brutal tactic here. And anyway, he, um, whether you do this brutal tactic or not, one of the other technologies you can research is logistics. It makes it so that military units only take up half the population they usually do. Whenever you can research this upgrade, it is in my opinion one of the best in the game because it, um, well, it makes military units cost half their population. So these broad swordsmen here, you would need two of them for, to count only uh, to count as one population. I don't know how the game does the maths here though, because there is no possible way to get half a population. It'll either show up as one more population or none. So yeah, I'm not sure what kind of math the game is doing, but believe me when I say that upgrade there does help. 
so I could put a small cut in here, but I might as well kind of cover moving ahead and like expanding your base a little. Because as you can see here, I'm pretty much defending myself very well and destroying all the incoming attackers with my military units here. Especially since I've got priests healing them. Oh yeah, by the way, I actually haven't researched um, the leather armor for uh, upgrade for my uh, um, cavalry. And I'm also going to research bronze sh shield here, which grants if infantry 1 plus armor versus uh, range, um, range attacks, which is very useful because... There's so many times in this game the enemy just loves to send archers against your bronze swordsmen, and sometimes they're not fast fast enough to catch up properly. So, to explain what I'm doing here is I'm pretty much moving up my cavalry as kind of an advanced force here to secure this gold. Now that I know there's not really much enemies around the gold, I'm then going to send my villagers up here because I know there's an extra choke point over here, and I'm going to build a ton of towers to prevent the Koreans from coming across this tiny little bridge that's over here, and uh, as real history class might have taught you, choke points were the bane of many civilizations in this era. So many battles were won with choke points. Oh, and as you can see here, also my cavalry is just completely obliterating that scout cavalry. So I'm using my cavalry to scout here, even though that's not what you should be doing at all. You should be just, you should be building a scout cavalry. Uh, speaking of which, I'll build it right now. I just forgot where my um building that builds them was the stable for a minute there. Yeah, so you can see here I left my um cavalry here unattended for a few seconds with weaker units such as the axemen. They I didn't expect this to happen at all. Okay, so apparently the little advanced force that was supposed to be a suicide force I sent out here are completely obliterating the Hatians. <laughs> Which I'm absolutely fine with, because I don't really need to convert these dudes anymore. I can just kill them. I have my town center, I have 900 food, I can build villages. I don't really need to convert them anymore. So I'm just going to destroy the second barracks they're building, because while I was, wasn't looking, my suicide force pretty much destroyed the first barracks they had. In fact, stop it! I'm going to start getting nostalgic about these guys, and I'm going to send the priest and all my broad swordsmen to help them, because they just earned their lives in my opinion. They deserve to live. Ah, come to think of it, that's actually may maybe how some feudal kings would act in the past. And here we are, after a little bit of time of doing some off-screen stuff. And, as you can see, I've got an army together. In my opinion, it's uh, quite glorious. Over here, I pretty much have defeated the Hadians. There's almost nothing left of them. I've got a little army here that's been pretty much fighting off the enemy, any enemies that have ca came this way. I'm just using my scout cavalry to check out what's over here a little bit. Apparently they've got one fishing boat left. And over here, I'm pretty much ready to decimate the Hurrians, especially with these uh, stone throwers I have here. They're upgraded into catapults, but we can just call them catapults here if you want. So an important thing to, rem uh, to remember about these units here is that they deal splash damage. So, I I'm going to show you how that works, and unfortunately, I'm going to need a volunteer here, so this chariot archer will unfortunately have to die. So if I just attack the ground here, you can see that... Oh, maybe he wasn't standing in the exact right spot, but... Uh, yes, as you can see, they will do splash damage to enemy units. So that's why I actually have every single one of them set to the no attack stance. This doesn't mean that they won't attack anything, period. For example, there I was using the attack ground, which is uh, keyed to the S hotkey. So you either click this or click the S hotkey, and then you can click somewhere, and you can order your stone throwers or catapults to shoot, which also means that like, they also are capable of like uh, destroying trees, I'm pretty sure, if you hit them correctly. Like, let, me, let me just tell them to fire up a little bit ahead here. Uh, apparently that's only with the, uh, maybe it's only with the stronger units, or maybe that was only with the, um, in the original version, like the original Age of Empires, not the Divinity Edition. Anyway, the important thing to remember about catapults is that if you find a building like, uh, this, it's pretty much safe to attack it, even if you got melee units nearby, because the stone throwers will make their rock, or whatever you call it that they throw, land right in the middle of the building, meaning that it won't deal any damage to anything around it. It's even okay to attack the towers like this, but when you're up, when, you're, when your stone throwers, or catapults, or heavy catapults, 
are attacking enemy units instead of buildings, that's when it becomes that's when it becomes a little more difficult because uh, the enemy units are all the times moving around. So what I happened before ha have happened, happened before is I was controlling a bunch of my broadswords when the enemy had broadswordsmen, and I actually outnumbered the enemy with the amount of broadswordsmen I have had. However, the enemy was able to move their broadswordsmen around unintentionally so that my own stone throwers hit my own broadswordsmen and killed them and I actually lost the fight because of that. So that's why I like to set them to the uh, no attack stance. But if you do want them to attack something, I really recommend, and you are okay with a few of your own units dying, or you're really good at moving your own units out of the way, which is called micro, by the way, then I recommend putting them to the um, stand ground stance, this one here with the boot. It makes it so that they won't move from their position, even if an enemy attacks them, which in my opinion is quite good a lot of the time, because you don't want them to be chasing enemy units, because these things also have a minimum um, range. So if something gets right up to them, like this close, pretty much, then they can't, like, they can't really fight back. Yeah, so, so once you've destroyed the towers here, you can be a little more aggressive if you want. I don't know, I honestly don't know why I'm holding back so much, because it doesn't even look like they have any ships. Like, occasionally, if enemies have ships in the water, you may want to hold, like, your cavalry back a little, or just have the cavalry destroy, or have the catapult these stone throwers destroy the dock to make sure they can't build any more. Oh, look! They actually have some enemy units here. A whole bunch of, uh, short swordsmen. The good news is I don't really care about any of my chariot archers dying because they only costed food and wood to make. So even though I've got like nearly no gold to speak of anymore, who cares? I can just rebuild all these units. Uh, yeah, so as you can see here, the enemy honestly is kind of being a bit of a pushover. I I'm just ripping through all their stuff and destroying it, like shooting with arrows throwing huge rocks at it, and they're not really fighting back. And, um, the last time I played this mission, there was actually a whole bunch more broad swordsmen that actually tried to attack me. There was, like, double the amount you see in here. So, this pretty much would be a good point to end it, except I'm going to bring over my scout cavalry over here, because I want to pretty much show you the layout of one more base these Hurrians have, because there's actually a previous recording I tried doing of this where I kind of failed with it. There was some audio issues, and by audio issue I mean my voice pretty much didn't get recorded at all. So it's just silent gameplay with me not talking, which wouldn't even make a good tutorial. So, yeah, my scout has actually decided to travel over here, which uh, pretty much revealed where the last of the Hattian buildings were, in case you uh, end up getting a little confused okay. on um, okay. while you're playing this and want to just destroy the last few of those buildings. Alamas. Uh, trust me, when you destroy them, they will be defeated. You hear, like, um, some kind of, like, drum sound, and there'll be, like, a, a line going across them, because it'll, the game will basically be saying, yeah, congratulations, you defeated them. This team is, like, no longer playing the game. You've won against them. Yeah, so, I'm just sending the scout over here, because you can cross this water here. You don't actually need to build any ships in this map, even though it's available. So, as you can see here, they built two towers, and I'm pretty much running my scout past these, so you can see the base layout they have. Yeah, so this is it, and, uh, if you ever see an enemy town like this, and it's, uh, well, if it ever looks like this and it's a real player, that means you're doing a really, really good job killing all their villagers, and they might have pretty much given up the game by now, and, uh, it's pretty much the same for AI, oddly enough. Like, there have been some matches I played in just skirmish mode, where I've went to the enemy base, and it's just like that. Normally this place should be bustling with at least a few villagers. By bustling, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even use the word bustling, just... It should have at least three villagers here. One probably chopping that wood, one using, actually, like, working on that farm, and then maybe a few others here and there doing stuff. So yeah, pretty much from here on, you can just send your scout cavalry back, as I'm doing now. Doesn't really matter if this dude dies, the enemy has pretty much nothing left. You just send your catapults in to destroy the towers, or just send your whole army in if you don't care about them dying, and destroy everything, and you pretty much win. And that covers this mission. I hope you tune in um, next time when I cover the next mission, which you may actually need to turn down to standard difficulty because it's a whole lot more difficult than this one. So uh, I'll see you then, and for now I'm just going to end the recording and have fun destroying all this enemy stuff, because I can. So yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, 
see you then if you were tuning in for my next video.